Hello, I'm Raymond Johnson, and welcome to Special Report, where we cover hot legal issues and hot trials. Today we're going to talk to a very special guest, Julian McPhillips, Jr., a very well-known Montgomery attorney, commonly referred to as the people's lawyer. Thanks. And we're going to talk about some issues in a very particular trial, a very important trial that's been taking place in Birmingham. Right. Julian, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you've been practicing for many, many years. I have uh, 36 years, actually, out of law school. Came out of the age of 24. I'm 60 now uh, and still uh, doing a lot of energetic things. Uh, but I think you're referring to a trial that took place in Montgomery, not Birmingham. Oh, you? I'm sorry. I said Birmingham. Okay, yes, it is Montgomery. Uh, yeah, in fact, I believe you were very much involved in politics here in Alabama. I have in been. Alabama. Uh, you know, people tell me my reason my political career was not more successful is it was too unconventional. You know, I ran 24 years of parts for statewide office. 1978, I was 31 running for state attorney general and came in second in the nine-man race, lost my runoff spot in late changing totals. But... Uh, in this past uh, 2002, I ran for the United States Senate and uh, made it into a runoff, uh, the Democratic primary, and, and that was it. Uh, since then, I've been back in practice full time. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, very good. I've, I've been following uh, you for years as well, and I, and I know you have a very well, outstanding well, thank uh, you. A career and legal career, yeah, especially kind. 36 years. Well, you know, time flies faster than you realize, you know what I mean? <laughs> we all uh, experience that at, at some time, if you live yeah. long enough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, today we are going to talk a, about this trial that I think everyone's heard about. It's the uh, trial involving uh, the United States versus uh, former Governor Don Siegelman and, and Richard Scrushy. A lot of new developments have been taking place in that trial that I'm yeah. sure everyone has heard about, and maybe yeah. we can go into them a little bit right. uh, more in detail. Absolutely. Well, it's obviously a big thing when you prosecute a former governor and then uh, Richard Scrushy, who's been a captain of industry in this state. I mean, uh, and I have the highest regard and respect for both of these gentlemen. I was very much offended, and I don't mind saying so about the way these guys were treated. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're here today to talk about it. And I think you had a few questions you wanted yes, to Yes, and you've been following this for some time as well. I have been. Uh, you know, I've known uh, Don Siegman really since 1972 when uh, he uh, actually was given his first statewide political job that year by my own father, who was chairman of the uh, Democratic Party's presidential campaign, Reverend Julian McPhillips, just back from Peace Corps work in India and Washington, D.C., believed very strongly in peace and McGovern at that time. And, and uh, uh, so uh, Siegman was just out of uh, law school. and. And Dad hired him to be the state coordinator for that campaign. I'm, that's when I met Don, and I've just developed a great respect for him over the years as well. And then in the last several years, I've really come to know Richard Scrucci, and I must say I have a, a tremendous respect for him. He is a man of just the highest uh, integrity and, and rectitude, in, in my opinion. And, and that's why I'm here, glad to be here. I'm not Very representing good. him in any of these criminal cases, but I, I, I followed him closely, and okay. I'm here to talk with you about it. Well, it was one of the contentions uh, during the trial uh, by the uh, uh, defense side of uh, Scrucci as well as the Siegelman defense side was that uh, there was evidence that was not true that was presented uh, uh, by the government that uh, <coughs> Richard Scrucci had paid Don Siegelman $500,000 uh, to be placed upon the con needs, the, uh, I'm sorry, not the con needs, the certificate and needs yeah. board. Well, the worst part of it is a lot of the evidence, even if it was true, you know, uh, was not enough to, to convict anybody of anything. You know, I mean, the whole idea of giving uh, money uh, to a fund that was, a, uh, it wasn't even somebody's campaign to, to, for election. It was actually uh, a fund to pass the lottery in the state. And, and it was done by uh, Richard Scrucci after the lottery had been defeated and there was a, a debt associated with the fund. The fund, though, was to raise money for public education, not a bad cause. And... Uh, and it was a charitable corporation. I've never heard of anybody being indicted, much less convicted, of giving money to a charity. Have you? No, I can't I say mean, that I, I have either. I mean, you know, it's just outrageous. And, and so, I mean, even if he was guilty of the things he was charged with doing, it, it, it ain't no crime. And the government's pretty yeah. position was that this was a bribery, that $500,000 oh. was, was paid uh, by Richard Scrucci uh, <laughs> to Don Siegelman for his uh, and, 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 oh. and quid pro quo. <laughs> Uh, was that he would well, be placed upon it was a gross exaggeration, an overreaching of the worst kind. You know, I mean, uh, when you consider what uh, Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez and some of these others have done, I mean, what they've done is a thousand times worse than anything that Siegelman or Scrucci ever did, ever dreamed of doing, you know. And it's just what, uh, the gross hypocrisy of it all that just gripes me so badly, really. 
And um, so, I mean, if, if they had been guilty of what they were charged with doing, it, it wasn't a crime. It wasn't bribery. I mean, Scrooge got nothing really of value for it in return. Oh, maybe somebody gave him some bubble gum, but that ain't worth nothing. You know, I mean, I say that facetiously because it was nothing of value there for him. He uh, and didn't even want to be on the board. He'd been on the board under three previous governors. It was sort of, he was tired of it. He didn't particularly enjoy it. There was nothing that the con board did. That's a certificate of need board that he was accused of, you know, somehow getting the, that position in return for the money he gave to Siegelman's lottery campaign. Well, well, that board w w didn't do him any good, didn't what, really do Hell South any what, good. What, what is the Certificate of Needs board? What is it set well, up to? <clears throat> it's a board that has to do with expansions of hospitals, okay? Uh, if you want to expand your hospital, you need to get a Certificate of Need. But Hell South already had all the hospitals it wanted, first of all. And in fact, it was probably in a cutback mode, if anything. But uh, Hell South uh, was not regulated in any way by the con board, nor is any health care company in the entire state of Alabama regulated in any way by the con board. Uh, Siegelman had